In this video, you are going to learn how to recreate this amazing parallax effect from the Chainzoku website. We're gonna go through the basics of parallax effects and we are going to use scroll speed and loop effects in Framer to achieve this effect. I'm gonna include a remix link for this project in the description so you can take a look if you didn't understand something. In order to follow along with this video, all you need is a free Framer account that you can create with the link in the description. My name is Nandi, this is Framer University and let's get started. So here we are in Framer and the first thing that you notice is that I already have this little document set up here. It is nothing crazy, it's just a desktop breakpoint that has a hero section which is set to fill uh, width and the height is fixed and uh, this little lock is activated. This is just because it will be easier to make it responsive later on for different breakpoints. However, in this video, I'm not gonna go in depth into that. Not at all, so we're not gonna make it responsive because it would just take too much time. And also just one more thing I wanna mention, I have a free course on Framer. So if any of these things that I'm talking about is a bit too advanced for you, feel free to check that out. The link in the description, framer.university. Maybe it's not out yet. Uh, if it's not, then you're just gonna see a sign up form if you see that, just make sure to be on the list and you're going to be one of the first people who get access to that free course. So now we can actually get started. So as I said, we have this hero section. Within this hero section, we're going to be having all of these images that we're going to use for the parallax effect. And we also have a section here, as you can see on the layers panel, which is down here. It's just some text, uh, nothing too crazy. So um, what I'm going to do is I already got these images. These are from the Chainzoku website. I did not create these images. So the thing with parallax effect is you need to make different layers for different layers of the parallax effect because these are actually made by splitting up the thing that you see into multiple layers. So you usually have a foreground, you have something like in the middle, a middle ground, and then you have a background. So in this case, uh, the background is the sky, uh, the foreground is this little illustration of the street, and we have the middle ground, and that will be the, the text, and we also have the little clouds in the middle. And we split these up into different layers because that way we can apply scroll speed effects for the individual layers. So we can create this kind of parallax effect because for example, the background will not move as fast as the foreground. Let's start creating it. So I'm just gonna grab this sky image and I'm gonna paste it into the hero frame and I'm gonna set the type to absolute so I can freely move it around, but I'm gonna make sure that it's in the middle and all of these pins are activated so it will always adopt to its parent container, which is in this case the hero. And I think that's all I'm gonna set here for now. Uh, the next thing will be placing the text here. So let's paste it in here. This will be uh, zero on the sides and 180 on the top. So this will be a bit, uh, you know, there will be a bit of a distance from the top. And the next thing that we're gonna add is the foreground and I'm gonna just paste it into. Oops, and I already noticed that the text is within the sky, which is not what we want. So I'm just gonna move it here. Um, and so I have to, again, set it to absolute and set these values again. And now it will be positioned again. So as you can see, it's now here, but we cannot see it. It's because it is actually behind the sky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this text here. So it is now above the sky so we can actually see it. And so the foreground is here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it to again absolute so I can position it freely. And what I'm going to do is these 
values will be set to zero and this button value will be also set to zero. So if we take a look at this website right now, you can see that it is pretty much a normal scrolling website. It doesn't have any parallax effect. So we're gonna add those in a second. But first I'm gonna create some frames for these clouds. So I'm just gonna have this and this, and then I'm gonna select both of these and then hit option command and enter on my keyboard because this way I can wrap them in a stack. And so what I can do with this stack is of course I can rename it to cloud one, for example, and then I can just uh, make sure that it is fit content. So it fits the content inside. And so when I start duplicating these, it will nicely adapt to the changes. So let's just duplicate these here and have a bit more clouds. Okay, I think this will be enough for us. So I'm gonna remove these clouds. And so we have this long, long cloud here. This because as you can see on the original website, they have these clouds that they move like across the screen um, and this gives it a little bit of life. So the way I'm going to achieve this is I'm going to create a frame for the clouds here in the hero section. So I'm going to create the frame and as you can see it's again in the foreground and that's not what I want. So I'm going to actually select these and hit command and L that way I can lock these layers so I can freely draw rectangles here and it won't be inside of those other frames. So this frame will be the frame for the clouds and I'm gonna move this here. So it's gonna be above the text but behind the foreground and I'm gonna set this to again absolute and I'm gonna just activate this pin and the width will be 1200 and the height will be 1770 and what I'm gonna do here is I'm removing the fill and setting the overflow to visible because of course these are a bunch of clouds and this is a, this is a really long frame that we have the clouds in so we need to set the clouds frame to overflow visible because this will of course overflow so I'm actually cutting this cloud frame here by pressing command and X and I'm pasting it in here to the clouds and what I'm gonna do is I am setting again this button pin and I am trying to reposition it to somewhere to the middle so let's just move it down oh and another important thing I noticed that now these are above the foreground so what happened is that as i set the type to absolute here in the clouds it automatically got the z index which i'm going to remove so as you can see it's now again in the background so let's keep moving this uh, to somewhere around here and i'm going to also rotate this i think it's going to have a 25 degree rotation and now again i just have to make sure that it is at the right position. So I'm gonna try to grab this, which I cannot really do. Uh, so I just have to... <sighs> I will just activate this pin and bring it down with this. So let's keep bringing it down. Okay, it's now here. And then I'm gonna activate this pin too. And then I'm gonna bring it to here. And I'm just trying to position it the way I want it to be positioned. So I think it will be around here. I'm gonna deactivate the pins. I'm gonna duplicate the cloud by pressing Command and D. This will be cloud two. And I'm just gonna make sure that it is positioned a bit differently. So I'm gonna move it to the bottom and a bit to the right. And then I'm gonna make another one, Command D. This will be cloud three and this will be again down here a bit to the left what we're gonna do is we're gonna select all the clouds and we're gonna apply a loop effect here i'm gonna set the rotation back to zero because we don't want to rotate these clouds what we want to do is to 
move them and actually offset them so they move to the top left. So the offset will be minus 17,000 and minus 8,000 and the transition will be of course really long 720 so this is around 12 minutes so that's gonna be really long and let's take a look at this right now and see if it works and yeah it works perfectly so now these clouds are moving and yeah it looks really good so what we're gonna do now basically the last thing that we have to do is to apply the scroll speed effects to have a parallax effect so that the foreground is moving faster than the background so i'm going to first select the foreground and here on the right panel i'm going to apply an effect which will be scroll speed and the foreground will have 95 percent speed so that's going to be a bit slower than normal then I'm gonna apply a scroll speed to the clouds. They will be 75%. So let's apply the scroll speed here on the clouds. 75%. So they are much slower than the foreground. The text will be again a scroll speed and the text will be 50%. So again, much, much slower and the sky will be the slowest it will have a scroll speed with 30 percent so now if we take a look at this you can see that the parallax effect is working perfectly maybe what we can do is to have the clouds behind the text uh, i don't really know why i made it so that it is not behind the text so let's just move it here and take a look at this right now yes it is much better so now the clouds are behind the text and yeah basically we are done with the parallax effect it is not so complicated in framer okay so now that we have all this i know that i said that i'm not gonna make it responsive but let's just quickly add a tablet breakpoint um let's check it out here so it seems like we don't really have to make any changes on the tablet breakpoint. Let's take a look at the phone. And here we have some issues because it is not really filling up the whole viewport. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change the hero. So I'm just going to set the width from field to fixed. And I'm going to say that it's going to be 810 so this is now so much better and the text needs to be a bit smaller as you can see so i'm just gonna select the text and make it smaller and also maybe make it a bit closer to the top and so take a look at this right now and as you can see now it is optimized for mobile too and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna just also make sure that this text doesn't look too silly here so just make it like this and now everything is nice and works on all breakpoints perfectly so yeah it's basically done so yeah this is how you can create a cool parallax effect in framer with just a couple of useful effects it is truly amazing that framer allows us designers to create these things without any actual technical knowledge as i said i have a free framer course you'll find the link in the description framer.university another thing is the remix link it is also in the description so you can also get that and learn from that and yeah basically that's it i hope you liked this tutorial make sure to leave a comment with your questions or just share your thoughts and yeah make sure to like this video and subscribe for more and i'm gonna see you in the next one